let me introduce our first speaker, who is Hans Aristrup. Hans is CEO at the Association of the Danish Pig Producers. Hans graduated from the Royal Veterinarian and Agricultural University in Copenhagen. And in his role, in his uh, industry, he's traveling, traveling a lot to giving lectures for swine producers. For your information, the region where Hans is active in is standing for approximately one million sow inside Denmark, only one million. But the interesting thing is the central European production. So from here, from Munich up to Denmark, if you see this cycle, you will find five million sows in production, so which is one of the most densest uh, swine producing regions worldwide. Hans will reflect on that topic. Hans, welcome on stage. Thank you very much. I left my jacket in order to look a little more energetic. I know you all just had lunch. Luckily, this is the swine breakout session and not the ruminants, because the ruminants do what the ruminants do when they were eaten. They're chewing the, the cut, yeah. So, but um, I want to tell you a little bit about this topic, the different regions, similar challenges. Denmark is a small country. Um, we have around 62% of all our area is arable land which means that we have had for many years the ability to feed ourselves and a lot of other people. Um, apart from agriculture, we also do uh, a lot of um, sea transport. We have a drop of oil. Norwegians took most of it, but we still have a little drop. And um, yeah, actually, a ship like that will transport pork, one kilo of pork around the world for a little more than 10 euro cents. So that tells you something about how global our business is. But 70% um, of the import or the export from Denmark, 70% you know, of the export is agriculture. And uh, that's also the reason why we, we used to have a, a fairly big um, uh, political uh, influence. But over the years, this has shrunk. And I think that's is the same th uh, thing what happens in our neighboring countries. Um, what Franz just said was that we have this, I see myself as a member of this area, an area which produces f uh, or have 5 million sows and 125 million slaughter pigs. Um, it's, a small, um, it's a small area. Uh, transportation of a piglet from from north to south, transportation costs is less than three euros. So that means that this is one area. Um, Denmark is 20% of the volume, and I would uh, say that this is a powerhouse of pig production because it's so, it's so uh, um, densely populated with pigs. If we take that circle and take it to the US, it only fills as much as this. So it's, it tells something about we have the total production of US within a circle like that. In Denmark, um, we have discussions, and not only in Denmark, but also in Germany and Holland. We have these discussions on, on welfare, on the use of antibiotics, and environmental issues, and um, it seems as if that the citizens in Denmark, those who, who vote for the politicians, the same the citizens in Germany and Holland and, and northern, northwestern Europe, are more concerned about this animal welfare, use of antibiotics, environment, than they are of the farmer's economy and the economy for the society as a whole. Um, so they make decisions when they're going to, uh, to the voting stand. And they say, I vote for the party who gives me better animal welfare, less use of antibiotics, better environment. And then, then when they go and do the shopping, they buy wherever they find the cheapest uh, product. It's 
a, a simple, um, uh, uh, it's as simple as that. It has always been like that. And until recently, I, I couldn't uh, figure out why. Until I got a, there was a, a, Dutch, a Dutch scientist who told me that it's the same thing when I decide next year I will run. I will run every morning to become in a better uh, shape. And um, when I wake up in the morning, I say, okay, maybe not today, but tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll do it. I have a chance to do everything right tomorrow. The same thing with the voters. They can go in and say, I want to do this. No, it's an opposite to the voters. The voters will say, I'll do this. I'll vote for it, but I don't do it. The, 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 um, the guy who is... Uh, who's saying to himself, I want to buy an electric car. He knows when he goes and he buys a non-electric car, he failed. But the one who said, I want to run every morning and doesn't run today and, but runs tomorrow, say, he will say, I'm still having the intention of running, but I'm not doing it. So that's why they vote for one thing and they buy another thing. What happens then is that they put some extra costs on our products. For instance, they say, you need more space. And uh, OK, we give them a little more space. We can't expect someone wants to pay for it. And especially in Denmark, not. Because when we sell our pigs, we sell them all over the world. And uh, for instance, when we sell something to Japan, they might not want to pay for more extra space. Maybe some people would do that in Germany, but they only take a little part of the pig. And when we add extra cost to our pig production, we have to, if we can't get them paid for by all our customers, it's just an extra cost that we'll have to carry ourselves. If you live in a, in a, in a closed market, like in Norway or Switzerland, the voters can go and say, we would like better environment, less antibiotics, better animal welfare. And uh, the politician can say, OK, you get it. And uh, in a closed market, then they can also ask the consumers to pay for that. But we cannot do that in the countries who are active on the world market. We just simply have to meet the world price. In EU, we have common rules. But that's minimum standards. So a lot of the, the governments can make extra standards. And what is very common for, the, for the, all the farmers in the EU, they think that in my country, it's a lot worse than in the other countries. But uh, we have this discussion on castrating, tail docking, and use of antibiotics. For instance, in Denmark, um, this is the use of antibiotics in Denmark. When we go back to 1994, we used about 200 tons of antibiotics, uh, including growth promoter. More than half of it was actually growth promoter. Then we had a growth promoter ban in, in 1998 and for piglets in 1999, so we didn't use any growth promoter since. And then we have this uh, use of um, uh, antibiotics. And as you see, it has been quite stable but the production has about doubled in the same time. So that is, of course, with um, giving us a lot of uh, work because you cannot do that without practicing, and that's where companies like Biomin and, and other countries who do a lot of research come in. But what you also can do is try to keep the diseases out, and uh, everybody here knows about uh, biosecurity. Uh, in Denmark, we have taken it to uh, uh, another extent because we actually see Denmark also as a biosecurity zone. And uh, at the moment, we are discussing to, to improve our system of, uh, of washing uh, trucks. And we wash all the trucks that g come into Denmark. We check them if they're clean, and, and then we disinfect them, and then people can allow to, to, to drive on. But... Um, Having the situation with swine fever and PED, we're actually thinking about uh, doing the wash even better. So we have to use maybe two to three hours 
with our own guys to wash each truck and with 20,000 trucks a year, that's quite an operation. But actually, this biosecurity uh, situation that we have in Denmark is actually our only advance uh, in comparison to, to the rest of you guys. We have high cost, expensive feed, expensive labor, but we have a, only a small border down to Germany, and we only drive pigs south. And if we can keep diseases out, we have the, challenge, have the chance of having a higher health status. That's uh, something we want to protect. This uh, thing about antibiotics have given us a lot of practice with the piglets because actually I think one of our problems still to solve is uh, how to be able to raise piglets without, uh, uh, without the necessity to, to, uh, to use antibiotics too often. And that's a big challenge. Uh, and of course that's also why uh, it's nice to know that somebody tries to help us by doing research. We've done a lot of research ourselves. And uh, the thing is, you can actually, you can feed piglets so they don't get sick, but then they don't grow, and, and, and it's kind of uh, a problem. So we practice a lot, and uh, I hope we will succeed. We, of course, also have the, uh, in Denmark, we are able to use zinc oxide, which are not all the countries in the EU who can do that. Um, so, but I guess that, as with every other thing that is uh, good and necessary in the farming business, it might be uh, 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 forbidden at a certain p time, and then we'll have to practice even further. Another challenge we have in Denmark is that we have decided uh, that we should aim for 10% of the sows in free farrowing. Um, we did um, uh, 1997. It was forbidden to build uh, stall stalls in cr crates in Denmark, and then we should have a time until 2015 before the stalls was totally banned. Um, then the EU came with a law saying it would be 2013, but we usually have a, a legislators in Denmark who have the understanding that we need some time to adapt to new things. So what they said was that before 2020, we would like you to have at least 10% of the sows in free fairing. And if that seems to work all right, then we will, at that time, we will see, should we make another law saying, okay, maybe in 2035, the, the, all the sows has to uh, use free fairing. And um, at this moment, I think we have maybe 5,000 crates or 5,000 uh, houses uh, or free, um, stalls with, with free fairing. Uh, a lot of the, I would say that half of the, of the new uh, systems are built like that. And um, of course, it's still a problem for the first couple of days to keep the, the piglet mortality down. But for those who succeed with that, they're actually quite I like this system quite much because it gives some other, after the first couple of days that where the piglets can get away, it gives more room for the big litters to, to, uh, uh, to uh, suckle on the sow. It's easier to, to wean the piglets and, and stuff. So there is also advantages. But of course, it costs money. It costs uh, a lot of um, uh, research, but it's also... Um, from a scientific point of view, a, a nice challenge. But, uh, but uh, uh, the thing is, y you cannot live from a challenge, so if we can't make it e economically sound, then it's, uh, then it'll be bad. But um, we hope that we'll succeed. <coughs> In Denmark, we have a, a major challenge, and that is uh, the cost challenge. Um, we have, uh, as you can see here, uh, we get from our w about one million sows. Uh, we get born every year. Uh, I think that in 2014, we will uh, get above 30 million uh, piglets. Um, but we slaughter less and less uh, of these uh, slaughter pigs ourselves. 
we actually we have um, the export of, of piglets has over the last 10 years evolved from uh, I think in 2002 we were around 1 million and now we this year we'll be up above uh, 10 million I think we'll 10 and a half million uh, piglets exported um, 60% goes to uh, Germany, 30% goes to, to Poland, and then uh, a little bit to Italy. So. But that's the thing that drives this is the cost. Um, the cost in the Danish slaughterhouses for labor is about two and a half times as high as the price for c the cost of, of labor in, uh, in the slaughterhouse in Germany. And... Uh <coughs> Having had a, um, uh, if we can't get more, uh, a higher price for our, our pork, uh, then that's a problem. We usually say that we can have uh, in Denmark a, a, a bonus because we have been on a lot of different markets all over the world for very many years. Uh, but it's, it's the, the way it has become, this bonus goes directly into the pocket of those who worked in the slaughterhouses. And, and therefore, we have to, to deal with the same prices as, as we get uh, uh, for slaughter pigs in the rest of the world. And with higher costs, that's a problem. Um, our piglets is actually a more of a success story because we have this high health status. We have had a situation for many years where we, where we could, uh, it was easy to get uh, borrow money. So we have, uh, in, in Denmark, we have an average sow herd of 750 sows per herd. I know that some of you guys come from country where that's not that much, but compared to Germany, uh, which is our main competitor in uh, where, w where we export to, they have around 140 sows per herd. Uh, Holland is somewhere in, uh, in between. So that's our advantage, and then we have this high health status. And our prolific sows gives us uh, uh, an average, uh, an average uh, uh, um, pigs weaned per sow per year will this year be around 30, 30 and a half or 31. So that's of course is giving us the edge when we are, when we are um, exporting. Uh, when it comes to slaughter pigs, our efficiency is at the same level as, as uh, as in the rest of Europe. Um, so that's, uh, that's our challenge. But uh, one thing you have to think about is what these North Europeans, are they crazy? Uh, all these laws being the first on saying no, no crates for sows. Now they want to lose farrowing. Then they want, don't want to castrate. Now they want to pit bit tail docking. Are they crazy? Will we ever get the same problems? If you don't think so, Think again, because the world is very small. It takes less than a second from someone, somebody puts something on Facebook in one corner of the world to in the other corner of the world. So all these challenges makes it uh, worthwhile to go to, to conferences like this to see what are we going to face in the future. I'm sure everybody here could stand up and tell something that you have experienced in your country which I haven't thought of would be a problem. But then I'm sure if you told me, I would think, okay, I have to prepare for that. And the only ones to solve all those problems, well, I, I thought about getting a camera so I could take a picture of you and show it on the slide afterwards. But uh, you're actually the ones who have to solve these problems. So good luck and thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Hans Aristrup. Very interesting, a lot of changing, a lot of changes during the latest year. There is time for one burning question, a quick one. So your 10% your on your free farrowing side, is that driven by you as the pork producers decided to do that, or was that a national directive of your government or your... Well, when somebody puts a gun to your head and say, either you decide to uh, do that voluntarily or we'll decide it for you, then we say, okay, uh, then we want to do it voluntarily. So we have, we, we said, okay, uh, it, it, it isn't by law, 
but we made an agreement with the government that we're working to get these 10%. And then they said, okay, then you're nice guys, then you get, uh, in order to support that, we will pay uh, around 1,000 euros per crate uh, to support this uh, uh, system. Uh, that just covers the extra cost of building. So people still consider it a risk because you don't know will it work or will it not. But uh, for instance, the Danish farm Polenor in Poland, who has 30,000 sows, they just built a new unit with, uh, with 5,000 sows and free fairing. Okay. Thank you very much, Hans. There is, as I mentioned, plenty of time after the four speakers uh, to address additional questions.